Hey, so anytime I pass by a place that carries the New Hampshire Gazette, I pick it up and go right to the letters to the editor section to see what people are talking about and writing about. And there was this one article that caught my attention uh, that was published in 2017, but it was republished in this week's edition of the New Hampshire Gazette. And I had a little discussion with my partner, Stephen, in the morning while I was reading the paper. And I happened to be recording at the time. So what you're about to hear is a recording in my living room of my partner, Stephen, and I just having a discussion. And I'm reading an article aloud to him. And uh, we're commenting on it. The other Mexican migration. You probably haven't heard about it, but there's another mass migration coming across the U.S.-Mexico border. However, these are not Central American families. It's Toyotas. It's Toyotas. Uh, fleeing horrific conditions back home only to be separated, incarcerated, traumatized, and demonized by the Trump gang for seeking humanitarian asylum in our country. Rather, these migrants are going the other way from the USA into Mexican border towns. What are they, like Charlotte and Pearl? Yep. Where they're welcomed with open arms instead of armed guards. They're not migrants, they're the same. There's no border. There's not, there's not <laughs> two countries. I know. There's not two countries. So, these people who want the wall are assholes. Kristoff Atlas is an asshole. They don't know what they're talking about, and they just should leave, just stick with their own life and leave everyone else alone. Yeah. These these people from Mexico, there's no fucking border. It's just a little river. That's the best argument I ever heard for against the wall, actually. <laughs> what? These people are assholes. These people are assholes. They should focus on their own lives and leave other people alone. <laughs> there aren't two countries. Like, there aren't. No. They're, they're just, they don't understand. That is so good because there was a debate between should there be a wall or should there not be a wall at, at um, Liberty Forum. And I heard Kathleen Wilkstrom walked out because she was so disappointed that they didn't take the um, there shouldn't be a wall position hard enough. That's, it is, like, people think the, when we're like, well, there should be a wall between New Hampshire and Massachusetts, they, they're, they're like, oh, ha, ha, you know, that's absurdist comedy, right? But it is exactly the same. It is exactly the same. It's no more or less appropriate than a wall over the Rio Grande River in Texas. It, Uh, but, but, there's no but, but, you guys are just assholes. Any America that you want to protect by being such an asshole is not one that I want to be part of. Yes, and I need New Hampshire to secede from the rest of yeah. what is considered politically America. Yeah, the focus has to be on real solutions, not hurting others. Like, where's the Declaration of Independence? Where's the nullification of the government? That's what's required. Not a violation of private property and movement rights. You know what's great is, I'll bet that the people who get excited about a border wall are pretty much have a good overlap with the people who would get excited about a declaration of independence against DC. Being like, you know what, they're not solving this damn problem, no one will do it. That's not true. You don't think they would? No, people who like a border wall are assholes. People who like independence from DC yeah. are virtuous and thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I'm right. 
I don't know if I'm right about that, but it is true that long people are assholes. Yeah, that was a really good argument. I mean, it's barely even an argument. No. It's not. <laughs> so are you being sarcastic? No. I'm not. I mean it. I think that it, that's what it comes down to. I mean, there's more you could elucidate on being like, oh, if goods don't cross borders, soldiers will, is the expression. Like, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't care about the war. You alone. know what? Like, it's gonna, harm, it's gonna harm everyone because things will be more expensive. But I don't want to even make that kind of argument. No, because it's, uh, it's not an um, economic argument. It's a moral one. Yeah. Just don't participate in any assimilation efforts. Like, if you don't want to be around Mexican people because you think that they're not good for you or whatnot, don't be around them. You don't need to live where they are. Go, go live in a place where no one likes them. And they don't like us. Like here. No one likes Mexican people here. They don't really. I mean, they're, they're, they're tolerable. They're either, they're, anyone who, who's different is tolerated. But no one goes out of their way to like, make sure they're part of the community. And so they're not. I don't know, that's how I read it. I think you're right. And so they're not part of the community, and that's okay. Like, there's, yeah. there's definitely two stratas in, in New Hampshire. There's the Hispanic population and the white population. And I don't know. Seems to be just how it is. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's got me excited thinking about New Hampshire independence. I understand the argument. Like, there is, there is a good argument that we want only people who understand how to own and employ capital to be highly productive. I'm sorry, you lost me there. I, not that I don't understand the point, but I don't understand where that came from. Um, people who are poorer don't know that kind of stuff. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So they do things manually that should be done mechanically. Mm hmm. Right. Which. lowers the overall productivity on average. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, it does not matter. It doesn't it matter. Not detracting from anyone. As long as they aren't violating property norms, then it doesn't matter. Like, if they're littering and making a mess and just being pathetic, then that's well, not right. I think people like Christophe would say that they are violating property norms by taking in $8,000 a year more than they pay out. No. That's bullshit. Well, that's what the numbers say. Okay, said. first of all, that's saying that, that's, uh, that is making a bold assertion that paying taxes is good. First off. So, it's uh, saying like, anyone who has net payment of taxes is somehow better than someone who has negative. I, I don't think that is truly their argument. It's that the person who's receiving, not that taxes are good, but that if someone is taking, then that's bad. But it, no, it's not. It's, that's what the system is set up for. That money is for them. 
Uh, yes, while I agree with you, here's a counter to that point. In monoculture societies like former Sweden, people can have huge welfare nets even within smaller groups like the Irish in America. Or they form a fraternity and within that group charity has a natural balance. Yeah, and that's right. Within, within a static culture there is a balance that would be violated when others come in and don't fit with that balance. Yeah. That's like saying we have to be insulated against global economy and movement of people in order to it, instead of changing the way that our sa our social security nets work to make them better like they're just if they can't handle this then they're pathetic because they are they're really immature not sophisticated like a true safety net is insurance and it excludes people that you don't want to be included and it's all fine wow that's, those are great points yeah weren't we all against the whole idea of a tax net anyway like yeah yeah, this social safety net thing that they had in Sweden fell apart. Right. It wasn't even good anyway. Bad. The only safety net in society is capital and the means to employ it. Right. It's economics, people. It's just like raw production. That's the ability to create things and keep people sustained and alive and healthy. That's the safety net. And if you have that, and you focus 0% on creating some kind of structural safety net, then everyone will be have a safety net. Because if something bad happens, we'll all be rich and we'll be like, you need some help. Right, <laughs> yeah. Like, the more time we focus on specialization in the global economy at the, and nothing else, the more kind of safety net insurance and everything we'll have. Like, people will be buying so much insurance that, like, just everything is insured. Like, you can't even, like, even your stuff is insured by someone else. Wow. <laughs> that would be great because the insurance companies have a financial interest in making the world a better place the way that people want it to be. Like, I don't want my house to burn down. Okay, well, I'm going to insure it. Here's what I you got to do. I my house rock. Like, yeah. <laughs> all, all of the places around here are insured. There are houses insured and there's the security companies that go with that insurance employ the police. And so the, I think that the police are employed by insurance companies ultimately, and that they are also around to protect other people who didn't buy insurance, because they're just around. Right. And they don't, you know. There's extra um, externalities, yeah. Yeah, great. Wow, that's great. What a positive externality. But those people in Texas are assholes. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Dude, I remember doing that in um, WWF for a Super for an N64. Yeah, that exact one. Dude. That is awesome. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, back to this article. Okay. <clears throat> as many as, oh wait, they are mostly working class people seeking relief from our nation's affordable, unaffordable, 
no care health system. As many as 6,000 a day travel to towns like Los Algodones, across from Yuma, Arizona. Los Algodones? Los Algodones. The cottons. Across from Yuma, Arizona, to get medical services and prescription drugs. Bum, bum, bum. That's what grandmother does. She's yeah. been doing that for decades. It's like... They cost less right there. They cost more right here. I'll go there, to that store. They want a better job. Ugh. It's weird even that they make this, they call these people migrants. It's like... If you go, if I have to drive to, to Manchester to buy something that they don't have here in Portsmouth, does that make me a migrant now? I think he's taking poetic liberty to um, mirror to get your the situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. To get prescription drugs that are priced out of their reach here in the U.S., nicknamed Molar City, Los Algodones, has more dentists per capita than anywhere else in the world. Quality dental work in Mexico averages two-thirds less than it costs here. Man, what a boring town. <laughs> <laughs> this is because the health system there prioritizes care over profits. <gasps> Start with professional education. That conclusion is not supported. Well, here he is. He's going he's gonna to make his case. This is because the health system there prioritizes care over profits. Start with professional education, which is tuition-free in Mexico, meaning dentists and other health care providers don't have to jack up prices to cover a crushing load of student debt. Also, Mexico's universal tax-paid healthcare system That's doesn't... That's not how prices work. That's not how prices work. What do you mean? Prices aren't set by the amount of debt that... Okay, the market doesn't set prices based on the cost of the factors. It sets it based on the demand. Right. Right. Yeah, like, oh, I need the price to be... Oh, it does... Like, okay, so... People within the market who aren't educated about business will set things based on the cost of factors. Like, um... The groomsmith was telling me... I was like, so... How did you choose the price for your haircuts? And he, he, was, he listed off like all the costs that go involved. And then how much he needs to make. And that was, that's the price. <clears throat> and I was thinking that, well, that's not how the market determines prices. The people will pay up to the value in their minds of the product. Not, and they don't care how much it costs to you. Like, if it costs to you $500 to produce a haircut, they're not going to pay that much. And similarly, if it only costs $1 for you to produce a haircut, they'll pay $2. But they also would pay 45 Right. Anyway, you know all this. I think you're putting it really well. I'm enjoying you say it because that is something that... As reading Human Action, I am hearing these um, explanations of how prices are set, for example, and him underlining the point that it's not set by the factors of production. It doesn't matter if the logs that you use to build the house cost you this or that. It's like, that matters to the businessman, but to the, the consumer, they have a, they have a rate that they are willing to buy, and there are factors that go into that, like goodwill, and what sort of things that they consider that you do. Psychic gains. Yeah. Um, 
Well, the factors actually have no bearing on the price at all. No. They, yeah. But what they do, because the price in in a developed economy is equal to the maximum that the customer is willing to pay. Right. Right. And the factors have no cost. They they don't ma matter at all in the price because basically the factors of production only matter whether it's produced or not at the price the customer wants. Right, right. So if, if you can't do it at the price the customer wants, it doesn't get produced. Right. Which is probably why there's a lack of dentists. Um, also, Mexico's universal tax-paid healthcare system doesn't settle patients with exorbitantly expensive insurance bureaucracies. Here's what happened. In, in Mexico, they subsidized the creation of dentists. Okay, so they flooded the market with dentists. And that drove the price of dentistry way down because there's so, like, it's free to be a dentist, right? So you pay no cost, which really doesn't make any sense. Um, and so it wouldn't work out if there weren't people coming in, so I guess they are migrants, coming from a place where dentistry is not subsidized. Like in America, dentists pay the cost of becoming a dentist. And so they see this they're like, oh, over there, it's highly subsidized by someone else. I'll go there. Like, but the, it's just because it's at the expense of something else. Like, you take, you're they're taking money from some part of the economy and pumping it into dentists and creating more dentists, and the the dentists are at a lower cost, lower price. They can't even make as much. There's too many of them. Right, so it's not even really very fair to the um, dentists who are produced from the subsidized dentist school. Well, I mean, they do it, so they find that it's fair. They find that it's fair. That's what is right. not but fair is the well, people, other the, things being equal, the they, burden that was shifted to someone else. That's not very right. The burden that was shifted to someone else, you're right? Someone bears the burden of creating these extra dentists. Yeah. Well, I, I was just saying, all other things being equal, if dentists in Mexico were not subsidized and did have to pay the cost of becoming a dentist, then they would probably find it to be more profitable for less work because um, the the flood of customers that they're getting. Has driven and the flood of pr producers has driven the cost of their services down, um, and the, the amount of profit that they can get from it as well. So it's worse off for them than it would have been if they had done it independently. I guess it depends. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the profit. So it might be the same profit. Yeah, it might be. But generally, when I think of a situation where something is subsidized, you get more of it, and all other things being equal, the demand is the same. But maybe you're saying that the demand is not the same because it increases because it's got these migrants coming from other places, right? Right, yeah. Uh, so this yeah. is like saying, like, we developed technology here in Liechtenstein that allows us to produce the highest quality watches at the lowest price in the world. Mm -hmm. So now everyone in the world is going to come and pay more money than a Liechtenstein person would pay for a watch. Uh, uh, uh. So now they're exporting dentistry. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, hey, all right. I see that. Thanks. It's a system that's open, affordable, and accessible to all. The opposite of ours, which is why hordes <laughs> of U.S. working class people go south to find care. As a Truth Out article reports, quote, U.S. citizens seeking health care can park in Yuma for $5, walk across the border, 
get the help they need, and come back for dinner. I wonder why, first of all, why people think dentists are unaffordable. <laughs> um, <laughs> step one. <laughs> I guess they put a really low value on the, their oral care. Like, people probably spend so much more in, I don't know what. I think that there are people who will come complain that everything is unaffordable. Yeah. People are like, two dollar coffee. Yeah. There was a, a New York Times ad today that was for an article. The article was just buy the coffee. And it was about finance like all these people who were like, you know that's four cups of coffee a month. Or, or like, if you save that much, then you you could put it into this retirement or this investment thing. You, you've heard that, you know, you probably know the three piece, yeah. Yeah. And the article is like, just buy the coffee. <laughs> like, any, anyone who has a real financial, like, solution to you is not is gonna be like, they're not gonna be like, you should save your coffee. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't my argument. I know, it's, it's a way to relate the, 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 the price of coffee. Yeah. Let me finish this article. Okay, I guess so. Instead of building a senseless border wall to keep people out of the U.S., our leaders ought to be looking across the border for ideas on how to build a better healthcare system. Copyright 2017 by Jim Hightower and Associates. Jim Hightower? Associates, huh? Contact Laura at jimhightower.com for more information. Our leaders. Yeah. Hightower, that's a funny last name. people. I want this. I hate our leaders, first of all. I mm -hmm. want people to be more specific. Say, like, dentist, like, leaders in the dental industry could learn from the Mexican dental industry to, in, to make the service better. Right, it's within the industry. It's so bizarre that there, there, is this, there is even this idea of a generic leader. It is weird to me. How can people even think that? It, Animals are, are uh, or humans are like pack animals, right? So we're like dogs in that they want the out there to be an alpha and a beta and for them to want to know where they fall in line. And like my observation of these crowds of people who go chant for, sh for Trump and stuff is like, they're like, yeah, we got our alpha. They were part of this pack and we're the best pack. And like, they, my, people like my mom, she's always said the phrase like, I just want a leader who blah, 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 blah. Like, she's, she like wants a leader. She knows that she wants that and that's what she wants. And that's what people want. Yeah, of course they want leaders, people who are great. But like, I want my local dentist to be the, leading his field, you know, mm -hmm. like, I think that's a different kind of leader. That's that's a real leader. What <laughs> these people want is um, an asshole, like the bully, the the like, the town jerk, the um, what's his name Gaston. Like everyone knows, politicians are the top jerk of the area. Why do they want that? I don't know. I don't want that, but. From what I've observed, and tell me if I'm fear. wrong here, but this is what other people say they want. They right? want a bully because they're afraid of being bullied. Like, these people, look, okay, coming from this article, they want a leader to make dentists better in America because they're afraid that if they don't, dentistry is going to become completely inaccessible to everyone. They're like, 
these people, these dentists who are motivated by profit are going to fuck us up. They're going to fuck us over. They're going to be like, well, we're going to clean our own teeth and not yours. Like, I think that's literally what they're afraid of. They're afraid of being excluded from the economy. Right, because he's like, I don't live in Mexico. I don't live in Yuma. I can't go get this. Yeah, so for anyone who doesn't understand money and doesn't offer something productive to the economy, should be afraid of, or they should realize that they're going to miss out on the fruits of others' labor. Like, they can't just, in America, you can't just make a dentist work for you. Oh, thank God. <laughs> what a horrible concept. You have to, one, understand money, and two, produce it. And then you can get the dentist. But if you, if you can't do those things, then you can't force anyone. And probably, I would say, a good 80%. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that 30 to 50% of America doesn't even understand money. Like, on a basic level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not only just money, but also the money of the U.S. Like, Henry Ford said something about, like, if the American people knew how the... Uh, how the banks work. Bank, something about like how, how the mon monetary system works, there would be a revolution in the streets tomorrow. And it's funny because like that was a hundred years ago. When they were drafting the Constitution, there's only one there's only one crime in the Constitution. And it is okay, there's two crimes. There's treason and there's counterfeiting. And both are punishable by death. And th like the, the founding fathers, the fondling fathers, the, like some of them. I remember reading recently some quotes from them saying like, if anyone ever proposes legislation to establish fiat currency, they should be put to death, and anyone who seconds it should be put to death. That like it's the worst thing that you should you can't you can't even say it from a position of power you can't even mention it it's so bad it's bondage for future generations oh my god well that's only when there's debt involved it's that's theft fine. from current. Or, or very soon to be. So like, if you just print up new money, it really it doesn't steal immediately, but it does quickly steal the purchasing power of the people furthest away from the money. Yeah. Within a few years. Well, it's, it's not dependent on years, it's dependent on people's perception. I just learned this from human action, that there can be inflation in the money supply, meaning more money printing, more bills than people know is in circulation, but, and prices won't rise until people perceive that there's more, um, that there's more money in circulation and that they need more in order to get by for their other, to get their other products, otherwise there won't be an inflation. In That's true, prices. and also inaccurate to the extent that prices, certain prices do rise because more money is going to bid up the price. Uh, that makes sense too. Yeah. So wherever the money's created, the stuff around that within the network, <clears throat> anything that has a market where you can bid up the price will get bid up. Unless it's yeah, because those people now have more money. So some, someone can start raising prices the first person to receive the new money. Yeah, so if you like a very simple analogy is look at um, Manhattan real estate starting in 1971. Like, that is a very finite resource that has an active m a bidding process, mm -hmm. very active and um, 
strong bidding process for bidding up the prices of things. And the prices in terms of dollars of real estate in Manhattan since 1971 has exploded. And people, but that hasn't gone, like, like you said, that hasn't gone to general prices because there hasn't been a crack up boom mania. So like, right. The, what Mises is referring to is like a mania where people, they leave, people start bidding up the prices of things that don't need, that aren't being bid up. Ah, uh, right, because it's better to have the thing than the money itself. Like, I'll just buy the cheese, I'll buy whatever you got, I'll buy toilet paper. Like, and then the prices of those things go way up because it's, people are just buying them instead of holding their money. For a crack up boom. Manhattan real estate is the perfect example because it's where the money went. I would guess also real estate in like Virginia around DC where the um, like all the defense companies and stuff are but wherever the money that's goes. That's true because um, the county that Reardon's in, Herndon County? No, it's St. George's? One, one of the counties around um, DC in Maryland or Virginia is the um, wealthiest county in America. Highest income. Yeah. And it just didn't make any sense to me. I was like, what? How could that be New York City? Like, uh, it's been surpassed by this one like island off of Miami. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. It's like solid six story condos, like wall to wall on this island. And it's like, that's cool. They have like special tax exemption or something. Great. That's great. Well, what did you think? So that was, that was a good article. Well. Learning about the Pioneer CDJ 2000S, which is I've heard about that. It's um. It's like the DJ deck. I think yeah, basically it's I guess the industry standard or norm. Mm -hmm. And while everyone has their own equipment at home that they like to play with, like you know I like the tractor a lot. There's this lowest common denominator. That's what's in clubs and stuff. Two CD trays? CDJ. CDJ. I don't know exactly what it means. I think it came from the day when they were, it was like CD. Compact disc jockey. CDBJ, yeah. Um, but I don't think that they generally support CDs. Okay, that makes sense. 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 Sense.